Today is September 29th. It's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe a little bit past 4. And the sun will be behind the trees pretty quick, so I just wanted to film these Jerusalem artichoke flowers while they were still being lit up by the sun. Quite pretty. So, that looks like about six plants worth right there. And I probably have another 10 to 12 plants inside the garden. I have read that you should wait till the first frost. Last year I didn't dig them out at all, I just wanted them to establish themselves and let the tubers grow. This year <coughs> I'm thinking about harvesting the Jerusalem artichokes that have so many of them and reburying some of the tubers in the back of the garden where the they won't really affect much anyway because nothing, no light really reaches back there. So if I could uh, just harvest some of these <coughs> and spread them around the back just a little bit more, maybe off to that side just a little bit, that would be a good use of that back stuff. Um, they've moved forward this year and so I'm worried about them coming to the center of the garden eventually, which probably will happen in time. Anyway, they're a really good hardy plant, and you can't really kill them. You don't have to do anything but leave them in the ground. And they make pretty flowers this time of year, so it's kind of worth growing them, I think. Well, you can really hardly even see that there's a mound here right now because it's so overgrown with weeds. But right in front of me is the mound. I'll show you some beans. I left them alone a few weeks ago instead of destroying them, and here's my beans for the year. These ones got not very big. There's a couple bigger ones back in there. There's a few ones here, so... Maybe I'll give them another week, and then I'll dig this stuff up. This deep swale that I dug this year has um, grown over with plants, so it's not bare dirt anymore. Um, on the very bottom of the swale, I've been pitching all of my all of my trash, and by trash I mean all the weeds and stuff that I've been clearing out of areas. I just throw it in here, and it's acting like a sponge. It's really wet and mucky down in this thing, and it hasn't rained much lately, and it's really squishy. So give you an idea. So, one thing I was going to do is show you again. I don't know if it's a deer that comes in here and nibbles off my leaves from my from my biggest of uh, hazelnut trees, <laughs> but I really, really must like it because it's nibbling it off all the time. But it's not touching the other one. The other one's completely fine. The other one's right here and it's not being chewed on at all. So this other hazelnut bush must taste good or something because it's being chewed on all the time. All right, that was a little bit of action for the day. Next time I make a video, I'll just harvest everything I can in one day and show what that looks like. I think that'll be about maybe 5th to 10th of October in that time period. So about 10 more days. All right, it's now October 22nd. There's not a whole lot left still alive, but it's time for me to pick my little tiny mound over here. It's been raining for week so it's really really muddy. Really 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 muddy. So it looks like I have about easily two kilos of potatoes right now. Not bad for planting only eight potatoes here. 
That's all of the beans I got off this pile. And uh, I'm still digging up potatoes on this backside corner here. And then I'll go dig up some uh, Jerusalem artichoke, I think. It's had one, one cold frost already, uh, maybe a week ago. But probably not enough to really sweeten them up. But anyway, quite a few potatoes from this little tiny place, but I'm sure just flat ground farming here you'd get just as many so it's not because it's hula culture or anything I can see potatoes right here so they're probably green but <laughs> see that's probably green so I'll probably have to not eat that one but I'll see completely when it there's a not sure if it's green or not it looks a bit green so might not be able to eat those green ones. That's quite a few of them just right here. Don't have very much time right now. But uh, out there through that little gap, I've got a bunch of uh, Jerusalem artichoke leaning over. I'm going to cut the stalks and dig up what I can and all of this Jerusalem artichoke here that's all died back now a little bit I'm gonna get down to the base of that and dig that up and see what I can find and maybe bury a few of the roots uh, around that edge and take the rest home with me and eat them so there's been some boar digging around in here, so I don't know if I'm actually going to find anything. Man, those things are some major stocks. One tougher than wood, almost. Amber. Oh, jeez. Those are all decent tubers there. I can hear them when I crunch them. <laughs> jeez, a moly. So this is from one, two, three that we're going right together, and a fourth one a little further away. And they're just everywhere. I'm gonna leave whatever else is in there in there, and I'm gonna rebury. I'm gonna rebury this and this. All you gotta do is just dig in any direction deeper and I'm finding more and more and more. Just for size comparison, in my right hand, these are the potatoes. That's really way more than two kilos. That's about four kilos, plus it's all the beans in there too. The topian ember, or rather the Jerusalem artichoke that I just dug. That's about five and a half kilos of, of topian amber, easily. It's much heavier than the potatoes. They're much more dense and carry more water, I think. 
anyway, that's a lot. And keeping in mind, mind the Vera Pyramid back here, that I haven't even touched the Jerusalem artichoke in the back wall of this thing yet, so I don't know if I'm going to have time or not, but I might go back there right now. Whatever I'm going to do is I'm going to for sure cut the stalks down right now so they don't tear the crap out of my little lattice. Anyway, working on it, getting things done. baby corn and a total of uh, five baby corn. take these flowers, I'll cut the the green leafy stuff off here and leave it here. But uh, these flowers I'll just put in uh, sand and keep them kind of mostly dry all winter in a dark place, maybe down in the basement. And uh, next spring I'll bring them back out and plant them again and they'll grow next year. So those are really pretty flowers this summer. So I really want to keep them going. So I'll protect them. I've pretty much, I've left two of the bigger Jerusalem artichoke intact, where those stalks are there. I left one small one down there intact, and the rest of them I dug up, but I didn't do a very good job of reburying these roots, so I've got to rebury those roots. But I've gone around back and buried about six other ones, plus a couple of root clusters. From, from this spot here. I didn't dig very deep, so all the main uh, root stuff is still right down there. This is going to just be teeming with Jerusalem artichoke next year. And I didn't dig anything off the top because I really want them to establish themselves on top. <laughs> 